The Barbara Stanwyck Show. Good evening. Tonight, your gas company playhouse presents a melodrama in the manner of double indemnity, which I hope you remember as a motion picture I appeared in some years ago. Lee Marvin is guest star and Jacques Tournier directed. The teleplay by Ellis St. Joseph is based on a true life murder mystery which you may recognize. It was a big headline, front page sensation. And now in just 60 seconds, the first act of Confession. I'm Sergeant Harry Gibbs of the Santa Monica Police Department. You understand anything you say at this time may be used against you. The confession you're about to make is of your own free will, without duress or promise of immunity? Yes. Would you please state your name? Mrs. Paula Manning. Please state in your own words what it is you wish to tell us. I killed him. I reached the breaking point the day when Morgan, my husband, accused me again of being unfaithful. Betty Galloway, my next door neighbor, drove me home from the bridge club. 5.30, I promised Morgan I'd be home at 5. Oh, we must know how it is when you're playing cards. Yes, but I told him we were going to the dressmakers. When you see him, don't say anything about the bridge club. Surely a nice man like your husband wouldn't be upset about well, that. I'll call you. She thought Morgan was charming. Most people did. They only saw one Morgan. Nobody knew the other. Except me. Hello, darling. What made you so late? Well, I had to wait for my fitting, and then I had to wait for Betty's. I found the dressmaker. She hadn't seen you or your friend Betty for two weeks. How dare you check up on me? Where were you? I want the truth. All right, I was at a bridge club playing cards with a lot of other lonely women who have to settle for partners instead of friends. You went there to meet some man. There were only women. Then why did you lie? Because I didn't want another scene like this. Ask Betty if you don't believe me. I don't like Betty. Oh, she's a perfectly nice woman who came to our door soliciting money for some charity. She invited me for tea and I went. In the hospital, all you wanted was to be with me. But I didn't know you were going to cut me off from everything and everybody. For four years now, we... Well, I, I just can't go on like this. Boy, we've been out here all winter and you've only allowed me to meet one person. You were just tired of nursing. You wanted a way out. Morgan, I married you because I loved you. I'm not interested in any other man. But this jealousy of yours, it was... Can't I see how every man looks at you? Oh, and how no, you invite no, it? No, that's not true. You think I'm too old for you. You want a younger man. But you'll drive me to it. I'm leaving you. So you can go to him? Your lover? You really think I'd let you go? Let's see what my lawyer has to say about that. What lawyer? You don't have any lawyer. He was right. I didn't have a lawyer, but I found one the next afternoon. Mr. Judson Hollister, the lawyer? Yes. Oh, well. Uh, won't you come in, please? Would you care to sit down? What can I uh, do for you? I'm Mrs. Paula Manning. I want to get a divorce. Well, how did you happen to come to me, Mrs. Manning? Someone recommended you. No, no. I looked for lawyers in the yellow pages of the phone book. I once had an uncle named Hollister. He was a lawyer, too. Oh, I see. Hey, what is this? Will you please explain? Oh, Mrs. Donetti, uh, would you mind coming back later, please? No, no, way. now you explain. Look, it says here that I get nothing from my back. But if you tell my son $50,000, you sue for Mrs. my back. Mrs. Donetti, there was nothing wrong with your back. I knew it, you knew it, the bus company attorneys knew it, the judge and the jury knew it. I took your case on contingency, I lost, I get nothing, you get nothing. I'm sorry, I thought we had a chance. I get nothing? No, nothing. Nothing, nothing? nothing at all. Mrs. Manning, I'm not your kind of attorney. I work on contingency claims. You know what that means? I was once a nurse in a receiving hospital. You're an ambulance chaser. Exactly. Uh, I could suggest uh, Maston and Maine. I don't want Maston and Maine. Will you take the case? I don't know. Uh, let's hear some of the facts. Uh, 
What's your husband's name? Did anybody see him slap you? No, he's always very careful not to make scenes in front of others. Well, in California, there's always um, mental cruelty. How do you establish mental cruelty? Well, somebody testifies, like your family physician. He states that you're on the verge of nervous breakdown. Well, I haven't been to a doctor in years. A close relative. I don't have any. A friend? There's only Betty Galloway, the one I told you about, but she thinks Morgan is charming. Have you left him yet? No. Then don't, until we have evidence. If we're going to prove mental cruelty, you're going to have to give him a chance to practice it. Uh, Mrs. Manning, do you have any idea of your husband's worth? No, he never discusses it with me. Do you have access to his books or his safe deposit box? Only the wall safe at home. Uh, he showed me the combination. He's had one heart attack and... What does he keep in that wall safe? Oh, negotiable bonds mostly, I believe, around uh, $300,000. Then he could afford a sizable settlement or alimony. I don't care about that. I just want to be free again. Do you want to go back to nursing? Well, yes, of course I would have. No. No, I don't. Then don't talk like that. You deserve a sizable settlement after what you've suffered. Yes, I suppose I do. Will you take the case? Why do you want me? I don't know. But I did know. I only wondered if he felt the same attraction. I had to find out. How is it a woman like you never got married until four years ago? My first husband died at Anthea. Your tie is crooked. Right. I was sure now. He felt what I felt. I went to his office again the next day. The third day we drove to the beach, he had to pick up some papers. Why, it's an apartment. Yeah. Somebody lives here. I do. You do? Over a merry-go-round? Well, it's closed during the winter. It's really very quiet. In fact, it's quite quiet. I love Mary Garand. It uh, belonged to a client friend of mine, an, an old circus man. Oh, where is he? Sam Quentin and I lost his case. Oh. Do you like him? Yes, yes. You know, there really weren't any papers. I knew there weren't any papers. I had gone to Judd for one kind of help. I had found another. It was wonderful, almost unbelievable, to be wanted again. Japanese fishermen. Their kids are so cute. You better get going now. Hurry up with my divorce. I'll do everything I can. Oh, I wish I didn't have to see Morgan again. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I... if I could just vanish into thin air? <laughs> the police would probably nab him for doing away with you. Uh. It's an idea, though. What? Nothing. We're gonna go. What idea? A way we could have each other and the money, too. You remember the Scott case? His wife disappeared and everything pointed to murder. But they never found her body. Well, nobody knows that we know each other. So all we'd have to do is to uh, arrange a little evidence. How? I don't know. Uh, deliberately make your husband jealous. Come home late one night, say, and uh, refuse to tell him where you've been and taunt him until he gets violent. Then run over to your neighbor's house. What's her name? Uh, Betty Galloway. Yeah. Run over to her house and say that he's threatened to kill you and ask if you can spend the night. And he'd follow you over there and threaten you again, but this time in front of her. Then disappear. 
Yes, but they, they'd put him in prison. Where has he put you? Oh, I, I couldn't do that, Judd. I, I just couldn't. Well, of course you wouldn't. I wouldn't think of asking you. I tried to shake the idea out of my mind, but it was there. It was there. Hello, darling. How'd you get this parking ticket? What parking ticket? I found it on your windshield. Where? When? This afternoon. I was driving down Sunset and recognized your car. It says you were parked in a two-hour zone for four hours. Where were you? Your dressmakers again. I refuse to be badgered like this. You were with your lover. Oh, please. Think whatever you like. All right. There are other ways of finding out where you go. What ways? I'll hire a detective. I'll have you followed. It was the worst threat he could have made. It meant I couldn't see Judd again. But now I had to. Judd. Morgan, he's having me followed. Oh, no. Oh, I lost him. I lost him. I went through the department, so I took a taxi. Judd, why can't we go away now, today? Oh, sure, on what? I had some money of my own, $1,200. Oh, I know it's not enough, but... Look, I I'll get him to go home to Scarsdale. Then you could come to New York well, I and I don't we hide can... behind street corners until you whistle all clear, huh? You think he's possessive? Well, so am I. How do you think I felt last night when you went home to him? You better get yourself another lawyer. Well, Judd, there must be something we can do. I told you last night what we can do, and it's all we can do. No, I can't. It didn't work, Paula. In two months, we could be down in Brazil. There's no extradition down there. Rio, Sao Paulo, that whole country is booming. And with $300,000 capital, we can make a fortune. No, no. All right, then get out. Go on, get out of here. I'm not going to be torn up like this. You're going to have to make up your mind. It's either me or him, Paul, and I mean it. Oh, Judd. Judd. How do we do it? We made our plans fast. And that night, I deliberately set Morgan into a jealous rage, then ran to Betty's house. I knew Morgan would follow. Where's my wife? Paula! Don't lie to me. I know she's here. I'll find them and I'll kill them both. Please leave my house, Mr. Manning. Not until I find them. Are you satisfied? You're coming home now. You don't have to, Paula. I said now. I'll get dressed. Judd, it worked. He threatened my life in front of Betty. Good luck. Just think of Brazil and me. Right. Brazil. Oh, the thought of it was all that kept me going through the next two hours. I always made Morgan's hot milk. That night, I put an extra sleeping pill into it. The next step was harder. But my blood must be found on one of Morgan's shirts. A shirt to be burned, but only partially. As if Morgan had tried unsuccessfully to destroy it. I put out the fire with Morgan's cane. The bonds? Next month, I never left Judd's apartment. Every morning, he would leave for his office. And then there was nothing left for me to do all day but follow the news of the nationwide search for me and wait for his return. Oh, 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 oh it seemed like a year today. Oh, what's so bad about today? Oh, the TV went on the fritz just before the 12 o'clock news. Oh. Oh, it won't work. We'll have to get it fixed. Oh, we can't get it fixed. Well, I can't sit here all day, every day without TV. Why can't we get it fixed? We can't have a repairman. Well, we can't have, have anybody to up to do. You know that? 
Well, I'll bring the radio from the office tomorrow. I don't want a radio. I want a TV set. I'm sorry. Oh. You don't know what it's like being penned up here all day. And these awful clothes. I did the best I could, honey. At least sound outside, I nearly jump out of my skin. I... I keep thinking about Morgan being in jail. We're both in jail. Yes, I know, but it won't be long now. Why, what happened? The trial starts tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, they start selecting the jury. That'll take some time. At least they've started. What, what, what could he get? What sentence? I told you, Paul, a second-degree murder is five to life. Why? Forget about him, Paula. After what he's done to you, you don't owe him a moment's thought. Not one moment. Paula, look. $320,000 in negotiable bonds. As soon as the trial's over, we're off to make our fortune, right? I can't help it. I can't get him out of my mind. Maybe you ought to go back to Morgan. No, no, no. We do love each other, don't we? Yes. You're all I have now. I forgot to tell you, honey, the merry-go-round opens up tonight. It's spring, honey. I'll cheer up, Paul. It won't be long now. We're almost there. But we weren't almost there. The trial dragged on for two more months. And every day the children came to ride the merry-go-round. And all day long it played its endless tune. of Morgan Manning for the murder of his wife, Paula Manning, went to the jury, which is expected to return an early verdict. The disappearance of Mrs. Manning three months ago touched off a nationwide search. Although reported seen in Miami, Florida, Toronto, Canada, and Newark, New Jersey, Mrs. Manning has not been found, and Los Angeles police were convinced that the missing woman had met a violent end. Morgan Manning, in his defense, offered nothing more convincing than a repetition of his plea of innocence, while the prosecution brought forth circumstantial evidence which seemed overwhelming. Manning's blood-stained shirt was found half-burned in an unused incinerator, his cane nearby. Witness Betty Galloway testified that she heard Manning threaten to kill his wife. Mrs. Galloway, a widow, lives next door to the rented mansion in which the Manning's wealthy New Yorkers were spending the winter. Further damaging evidence was provided by the missing bonds, the prosecution interpreting their disappearance as proof that Manning hid them as part of a plan to leave the country. Why I hear this? Just a minute. I've just been handed a bulletin. In the sensational Manning murder trial, the jury has just returned its verdict. Morgan Manning has been found guilty of second-degree murder. Sentence will be pronounced. That's just what I was going to tell you. I heard it in the car coming over at a different station. Now we can leave this place. At last. I mean, now, today. I want to get away from that tune, that music. Oh, now, wait a minute, Paul. There's still a couple of things we got to take care of. The phone rang four times today. Four times? You didn't answer, did you? No, of course not. Did you bring the cigarettes? What? I told you to bring me some cigarettes. Oh, Where sorry, are they? Forgot. You forgot. Yeah, I forgot them. Well, go get them. Sure. Huh? What's that? A well, little present for you for the trip. I'm gonna make sure that nobody recognizes you on the plane. Your black suit on in this. Well, nobody ever infringes on the rights of the uh, and privacy of a widow. Come on, put it on. Come on. Hmm. Oh. Who is it? Mrs. Gallagher. 
that away. <laughs> Don't answer it. I got her. She might go to the police. Now you get in the bedroom and stay there. I'll handle this. Hollister? Yeah. I'm Betty Galloway. I'd like to talk to you. May I come in? Of course. What do you want to talk to me about? Paula Manning. Paula Manning, the murdered woman? Yes. I thought you might have some information about her. Me? Why me? Well, you see, I'd gone back east until the trial. And just yesterday, I was going through some back bills, and I noticed that the phone bill had a charge for a toll call that I hadn't made. The night she disappeared. She's the only one who could have made it. Why well, call the phone company, but they wouldn't tell me whose number it was. So I looked through the Santa Monica book until I found it. Did she call you? Yes. I'm an attorney. She came to consult me about divorcing her husband. And she called me here one night stating that he had just made a jealous scene and she made an appointment for the following morning, but she never showed up. Did you tell the police? Well, of course. But why did you come here? I mean, what did you hope to find? Some clue or proof to save her husband? Well, you were a witness for the prosecution, weren't you? I had to testify the way I did. It was the truth. But today, when they were leading him away, he stopped in front of me and said, I didn't kill her, Mrs. Galloway. No one believes me, but I didn't do it. Oh, he looked so helpless and defeated, and his voice was so lonely. Then they took him away. Well, you don't think that Paula Manning is still alive, do you? Oh, I don't know. What to think? Oh, I didn't know her very well, but she could never have done a thing like that. No one could be that twisted up inside to let an innocent man go to prison for the rest of his life, no matter what he'd done. No, not Paul. She loved him, I know she did. Thank you for listening to me. She's gone, but she knows the way back. We'll get out of here, but fast. We'll go straight out to the airport. And... Well, come on, didn't you hear me get dressed? In what, my widow's weeds? Hurry up, Paula. The plane leaving for Mexico City at 9 o'clock. We just about got time to make it. Anything you want to put in here, honey? I'm not going. What? You go. I won't incriminate you. You'll feel better when you get on the plane. I won't be on the plane. Right. You take the bonds, Judge. All of them. I'm not going to leave Morgan in prison. I'm going to call the police. Oh, no, you're not. You're dead, remember? I can't afford to leave a witness behind. You reached that alternative very quickly. Sure, I'm a uh, lawyer. All you ever wanted were those bonds. True copy as stated by you? Yes. Sign it, please. We'll have to hold you here until we get instructions. I guess it's love. Well, there are several kinds. be a lesson to you. If you've committed a crime, never hide out over a merry-go-round. My warmest thanks to Lee Marvin, Josephine Hutchinson, and Kenneth McKenna for their fine performances. Join us again next week. Good night.